It's, it's Big Mark! Mark! World Wide Web, they call the internet. With different types of social media. Store the information sort of like encyclopedia. Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome back. So in the last trading, we were jumping into the automation and follow-up and how to craft the perfect message for your audience. It just boils down to analyzing where is your client avatar at, where are they at in your journey, and how can you give them actionable steps and direction on what they can do to elevate themselves through your value ladder naturally on autopilot by just you creating those valuable sequences that walks them through the journey. Now today we're going to dive into the actual tech that makes this dual funnel system function. I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of the triggers and and how to move people through your pipelines. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So when you're building your funnel and you're trying to think, okay, what triggers do I need? How do I move people through this? I want you to think of a few things on the platform and how to make this function. So the reason why it's called what's next is because if you just ask yourself what's next every time you're doing something you'll always have the answer to which trigger do you need which campaign do you need to write which funnel page do you need to build etc etc as long as you just keep continue to ask yourself what's next then you'll you'll know exactly what you need to produce so first thing we're going to do is jump into the funnel right so the triggers that I'm going to go over right now are assuming that I have an evergreen webinar sequence that I'm I'm not doing a live webinar every week that I'm just going to be driving people to this funnel and I'm going to get them to opt in and then I'm going to immediately invite them to watch a training and drive them to book a call with me so that is the strategy that we're going to run with here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so the first place I'm going to drive them to is this landing page here, the V2 landing page, right? So what are, the, what are they going to do here on this page? Well, I'm going to collect their name, email, and phone number and get them to opt in so I can send my email follow-up to them uh, so they continue to, you know, elevate up my value ladder, right? So... The, the first thing you gotta ask yourself is, okay, I'm collecting name, email, and phone number. Now, what needs to happen when I collect that name, email, and phone number here? All right, so just bring yourself up a notepad, and we'll call this the landing page opt-in. All right, and so we're collecting name, email, and phone, and the things that need to happen is, one, they need to get added to the follow-up campaign, right? This is where we've written our email sequence to bring them through our lead magnet. And then the next thing we need to happen is we need to tag them because the system uses tags to isolate everyone and the actions that they take and what they do. So we're gonna come up with a tagging convention on how to do that. Then the next thing that needs to happen is we need to update the opportunity, right? So in this platform, every time every time somebody's taking an action, we're calling it different opportunities. And then so what that basically is is your sales process, right? What what actions are they taking and to move up your sales process and how much is that action worth? Right? And then if you have any other platforms um, that you feed your leads to like maybe you want a Google sheet to be updated right you might want you know it to go I'm not sure this platform does everything so I really don't hook it out to other platforms but maybe you have you know a t-shirt on Printful right and you're selling a t-shirt maybe that's your your front-end thing is a special deal on your t-shirt you could webhook the information out to Printful and automate fulfillment you know so if you need to hook out to any other platforms then you know maybe a webhook needs to happen uh, one of the people that we took through the dual funnel process they use a program called job nimbus to track all of their their contractors and sales guys sending them out to the field for the live appointment so we were webhooking the data out to the job nimbus platform to do that you know, maybe they have a different CRM than this, uh, you know, whatever it may be, that that is uh, the option that you have there. 
Um, so, but in this example, all we're doing is we're tagging them, they're adding them to the follow-up campaign. We're gonna update the opportunity, and of course, I want a notification, let me know that I just got a new lead. All right, so now that one's done, we're gonna say, okay, what's next? Well, they're gonna opt in, then we're gonna drive them to the Evergreen webinar training. This is the training where I'm going to try to get them to book a call with me. To, you know, personally implement the dual funnel system for them. So the Evergreen webinar opt-in, of course, I need them added to the webinar follow-up. I need to tag them. I need to update the opportunity. And I want to send myself a notification. And then in this example, I do not want to pull them out of the landing page opt-in follow-up because um, they might not purchase through you know watching the webinar. They might not purchase through that. So I want them to still get the full 31-day journey. So I'm not going to pull them out of that campaign yet. All right, and then now let's say they opted in, then they're gonna go to the Evergreen, Evergreen webinar room. You know, so what do I need to happen here? Is I need to update the opportunity, saying that they've, they've seen the training. Um, then I need to also tag them. I don't care about a notification if they watch it or not. They, that's fine. And then now, now we got to think. Okay, now what happens after they watch it? They, then we're gonna drive them to the book a call now page, right? So we're gonna say if they because on the in the evergreen webinar room there is a button down there to book a call right so on the book a call page we need to remove from webinar evergreen webinar we're going to tag them we're going to add to booking follow-up we're going to update the opportunity and I'm going to send myself a notification All right and then again what's next oh well, we're going to take them to a pre-call survey this is going to help me determine where they're at in my value ladder so now we got to define what triggers come with a pre-call survey so with the pre-call survey we're going to just tag them and then update opportunity. And then I'm gonna send myself a notification with the survey answers. Now the reason I do this is because again, the questions in my survey are the perfect questions that are gonna tell, let me know where they are in my value ladder and I'll bring up the questions here in a minute and show you guys the questions that I asked so you can see a live example of what a pre-call survey looks like um, and then so sometimes I'll get those questions and I'll already know if they're a good fit or not based on those questions and I might refer them out or I might tell them you know go here and watch this training or do this or that just based on the survey questions and then so you say what's next and they go to the thank you page after booking the survey and nothing needs to happen on the thank you page so we don't need any triggers there all right so these are all the triggers that we would implement for the evergreen webinar strategy so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into triggers now obviously i'm building this out during this training so all of these triggers are going to be preloaded into your account for you so you can just modify the triggers that get preloaded but I didn't build them yet because I want to show you guys some live examples on how to build these triggers because this is the trickiest part for a lot of people so landing page opt-in 
what are, what's going to trigger that landing page opt-in? That's going to be the form that we build and implement on the funnel page. So you can see here I have DFS opt-in. And you can see form submitted is the event that's triggering this action. So here's all the different events through your funnels and websites that you can use to actually trigger um, actions to happen. Right, and then we're going to define that the form is the dual funnel system opt-in. So the one that I'm using, because I'm using the V2 page, I have DFS opt-in V2. Then I'm going to tag them, DFS opt-in. And then I'm going to add them to my campaign. Then I'm going to update the opportunity. Now, let me take a second to explain what opportunities are and how that dynamically loads for you. First, I'm going to um, fix this as well. All right, so um, the opportunity, so the pipeline, that's essentially what are all the different actions <clears throat> in your sales process that walks people up. So in my sales process, they're either going to opt in for the dual funnel system or they're going to opt in for the blueprint. All right, and once they opt into one of those, I have call to actions to opt in for my masterclass training, which is the name of my evergreen webinar. Right, and then if they opt into it, I have triggers in the background to let me know if they watch it. Right, and then of course my call to action is to book a call with me. Then if they book a call with me, then my next call to action is to complete a survey. Then I'm gonna get them to start my WaveMaker program. Or, and then I, ha I also throw WaveMaker events every year, so then I can put them here based on that. The Funnel Vault is a standalone Thing that I offer which is all my highest converting <clears throat> funnels email automations and triggers and so I can see if they've purchased that or downloaded that and then my final the top of my value ladder is my motivated maniacs program so then they'll be graduated to there and then here this is the name this is how it appears on the opportunity card so you can use all the variables in the system I'm using contact name this is what gives you the first and last name. So it'll say first and last name once DFS. Where they come from? Running Facebook ads. So my source is Facebook. And then what are those leads worth to me? I'm willing to pay $250 um, to get someone into converted for my dual funnel system. And then they're still open because I haven't closed them yet at this point. So this status is have you closed them yet allow opportunity to move to any previous stage in the pipeline that means you know can they go backwards like can they book a call with you and then go opt into your funnel again and get moved back to the opt-in phase or do you want to keep them at book a call and then not allow them to be moved and then duplicate opportunities would allow you would just create a fresh card for every opportunity so you would potentially have duplicates when you're looking at your opportunity pipeline all right so that is how you add the different the different actions that need to happen for that opt-in trigger and then for notification I would add an action here send email All right, and then I'll send it from support at marvinsworld.us then I would send it to and then this can be a common delimited list so more than one person needs the email, you would just type the email address, add a comma, space, and then continue writing as many email addresses as you want to receive this email. So I just want it to go to myself, so I'll just put myself in here. And then subject, again, you can use the variables, and if you don't know what the variables are, you can go here to custom values, go to contact, and here's all the variables. You just click one, and it'll give you the variable. And then, so I'm gonna say contact name, has opted for DFS, which is a dual funnel system. In this email, I'm just going to put this email is to notify you that someone has opted in for DFS. Then I'm going to put their name, their email, their phone, and then I'll go here to custom values, name email phone and that oh, I don't want user phone I want the contacts phone and then this is gonna dynamically load whatever they 
submit it into this opt-in form into the email. So if I wanted to call that person immediately, I could. If I wanted to contact them immediately. So then you just save. Now let me show you guys the pipeline and how you're going to set that up. You go into settings, you go to pipelines, and then you would create a new pipeline. I already have one created, so I'm just going to edit my existing one and show you. So again, this is the different stages of your sales process. Um, so when you're building out the self-liquidating funnel, you know what what are the different actions they're going to be taking, and how you're going to trigger them to move through those actions. So this is where you would define the different stages. You would just hit Add Stage down here, and then you can move it up or down wherever you want. You can delete it, and now the little funnel here this is does it show on the dashboard or hide on the dashboard and then the pie chart is show on the dashboard or hide so this is for the overall pipeline do you want the, the overall stages to be hidden from the pie chart or the funnel this is individual stages if you want to be hidden from the funnel right and then your pipeline information is what dynamically loads here on your dashboard so this is what it's referring to when it says the funnel or the pie chart you know so it lets you know exactly where people are at and what percentage and what's the opt-in rate and then here in opportunities is where you would see the people moving through your your different you know things in your pipeline so that that is the importance of the pipeline now let's move on to the next trigger the evergreen webinar right so again we'll just add a trigger we'll call this DFS evergreen webinar All right and then again this is going to be a form so I'll put form submitted add filter form is here we go evergreen webinar opt-in and then first thing I'm going to do is add a tag DFS webinar opt-in right and then you know what what other actions do we want to happen when they opt-in we want them added to the webinar follow-up so we're going to add to campaign webinar evergreen and then we want to update the opportunity all right so add update opportunity opportunity name Again, I'm going to just use the variables. And then the source in Facebook. Still 250. Open. All right, and then the next action we want is notification. So again, we're just going to send email. And I do contact name in the subject that way in my emails I can just search for the person's name and find any notifications or emails because like for example when I send myself the pre-call survey answers I want to receive those survey answers on the back end so we're just going to put contact name as opted in for DFS webinar All right, again, then we'll put the name, email, and phone. 
right. And then that was the last action we wanted to happen on this trigger. So we'll go ahead and save this. Now typically you would go activate when you're done and that makes it an active trigger. All right, so then the next trigger we're gonna be creating is if they watch the webinar. Now, since this is just a demo, I don't actually have a live URL defined for that, so I'm gonna show you my live one that we're using. So you can see watch PPP webinar replay here. So that is based on the trigger link because in the emails, we're gonna have a trigger link defined in there. And when they click on that trigger link, it's gonna load the page with the replay on it so that lets me know that they went to watch the replay. And we're gonna tag them, they watched the training. We're gonna move them in the pipeline. They've watched the training, right? And then so you can see that's both options that both actions we wanted to happen there. Now when they opt into the training, the whole purpose of this training is book a call, book a call, book a call, book a call. Right? So we're gonna actually want a trigger that removes them if they do book a call with us. So let me show you guys book to sales call trigger. So this is gonna be based on my cold booking calendar. I'm gonna add a tag. I'm going to add an update opportunity. I'm going to add them to the campaign and I'm executing a webhook. This is what generates my Zoom link for me. So this, in the example here, when I was like, telling you guys, you know, um, sometimes you can use a webhook to webhook out. This is an example where you would use a webhook to go to um, Zapier, in my example, and generate a Zoom link. So that's what I'm doing there to book a sales call. And um, since this is live, I'm not, I'm not, I'm running ads straight to booking my core booking funnel. So right now, I'm not even running ads to a webinar. So that's why you don't see the webinar in there. But the the trigger, the action. Sorry, let me go back. The action that you would want to add is very simple. You would just add an action at the end that says removed from campaign and then you can remove them from whatever campaign that was so if it was the PVP evergreen webinar or webinar here you can remove them from that campaign at the time of booking and so then the pre-call survey let me show you guys an example of that trigger so completed pre-call survey you can see here form submitted form is pre-call survey I'm going to tag them that they completed the pre-call survey I'm going to move them in my pipeline and then I'm going to send a notification to myself contact name has completed the survey then this is going to dynamically load the questions to the survey now let me show you guys the technical bits the trigger links and the forms so you know how to use those so here's the form builder and then let's go into the form so the one I want to show you guys is my pre-call survey and so you can see here's our standard fields these are what's just built into the platform everything from text HTML image your website captcha uh, source date of birth etc etc even the button so you can have a custom button if you want if you do not put a button on here it will just generate a submit button for your form you cannot tie a form to a custom button on the funnel page All right so you can see here I'm asking them obviously their name email and phone number we need identifiable information in the database so you want to always make sure that you utilize name email and phone so when they do fill out the survey they get mapped to the correct contact now on step one of the survey you I'm using something called sticky contact so you can what sticky contact does is it stores their information from that form so it can be used in the next form that they get presented so I'm clicking name email and phone number here and you can see I have if you go under options on the form you can see sticky contact is enabled it even gives you a, a little info here so it'll autofill that way when they do hit the pre the pre-call survey 
those three fields are already filled out for them. They don't have to type that information again. They can just start at the first question. So now let's talk about these questions. Now I say, how long have you had a personal brand? This lets me know where are you at in your process? Are you at the startup phase? Because most people at the startup phase have more time than capital. So I'm really gonna push this person into my wave makers if they're at a startup phase because it takes so much capital to rapidly build a personal brand in 90 days if it's a startup. Uh, now, how are you currently making sales with your personal brand? This lets me know, is your core offer a proven concept? You know, are you, maybe you're, maybe you've made some sales, but you're struggling to make consistent sales, so that's why you're looking into the system or booking with me. Are you currently marketing your brand? This lets me know, do you have a paid marketing strategy or are you just organically promoting your brand? So then I ask you, what types of marketing have you done? Right, so this is going to let me know potentially where your weak points are depending on how you answer this question. Now, what's the biggest problem you face with your personal brand right now? This is what lets, tells me what you think the problem is. So I have ammunition when I'm on the sales call so I can rub salt into the pain points, these wounds that you have that you think, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh, I think my webinar is <laughs> my problem. I think my funnel is my problem. I think this is my problem. This is my problem. When really your problem is most likely you just don't have automation and strategy in place that naturally elevates them to the next level. So this is going to let me know what you think that problem is so I can address that specific problem on our call. So whenever I present my, my solution to you, it seems like the perfect fit. Now, what have you tried to fix the problem? This lets me know what other things you've done. Have you bought courses? Have you hired coaches? Have you hired other experts? You know, ha have you watched how-to videos? Have you tried different platforms? Again, this is just giving me more ammunition to better prepare myself to pitch you on my high ticket product. What is your current monthly revenue for your brand? Now, my 90 day program is 5K. So depending on your current monthly revenue, that's gonna let me know where you at fiscally and if you're, you're gonna be able to afford my 5K package. You know, and then what is your goal monthly revenue for your brand? Now, based on the answer up here, are you currently marketing? What if you try to fix your problem? What's your current goal? And then what's your what's your actual goal that you want to hit? That's going to let me know what kind of effort I would have to make to scale that brand because I have scaled brands to six and seven figures before. So I know what it takes to scale a brand in regards to capital and systems to make that work. And so whenever I present my my course or my, my package as a solution, I can craft it around your exact goal. <clears throat> Do you currently have a coach or a mentor that is helping you build your brand? Now this is important to me because if you have a coach or a mentor, there's a thousand different ways to skin a cat and depending on who your mentor is, what their specialty is and, and what they're helping you achieve, it might not be a good fit because I might not align with whoever your coach is because you don't want to follow two strategies. You want to hone in and focus on one strategy to hit your goals and where you want to be. And if so, have you found having a coach or mentor helpful? So this lets me know if you already believe in coaching and believe in, in using coaching to get to the next level. Have you purchased an online course that teaches about building and automating your brand? This lets me know, have you not only gotten a coach or a mentor, but have you gotten something specifically in what I teach? Because I specifically teach you know, strategy and automation. What's the number one thing you're looking forward to in this call? This lets me prepare so I can meet or exceed whatever you're expecting to get on this call so I can make sure that I can deliver that to you. And then are you ready to make an investment to rapidly grow your personal brand? This lets me know, are you in a position to actually invest in yourself and purchase my program so I can get you to the next level. And then how did you find Big Marv? This is just a general question. So I can determine if my cold marketing efforts are working because if they say they found me through a friend or a referral or a Facebook ad or whatever it may be, YouTube, podcast, I mean, it could be a number of places. This lets me know which marketing avenue is generating the most ROI. So that's when I say pre-call survey, you want to think of the questions that you're asking and you want to 
you want to make sure that there are questions where people are going to answer them and then based on those answers you can analyze exactly where they're at in your value ladder now let's talk about trigger links these are the links that you're going to use when you're building out your marketing campaigns now these are the places the common places that you're going to use to drive traffic you know so when I wrote the strategy and I have my call to actions I got to make sure that I have a trigger link for each one of these call to actions so I can analyze those link clicks through my campaigns and tell whether those link clicks are working or people people are going through so once you create those trigger links when you're building out your campaign you'll notice um, what you'll notice here let me sh let me show you guys this so let's say you wanted to highlight some text and make that a link right so you can see here I've highlighted this text and then you can click this chain link here and select your trigger link from the link list so you can see this is the wave makers with big mark group right and then down here we have a button so you do the same thing you just click the button hit the trigger link here and you can see it's for my download so this is how I know did they download something do they have call intention you know did they want to book a call with me because everything you use as a trigger link you can trigger other actions and events in the back end because you're u utilizing trigger links to drive that traffic and based on those trigger links you can analyze what engagement you have and through through your follow-up sequences and move them through your pipeline and add them to different campaigns and automations based on that engagement what they're viewing you know um, so that that is trigger links and how you utilize those um, then so we went over the funnel and how to analyze what triggers you need in the funnel then we went over triggers and how to actually put those triggers into play and use them we went over trigger links and what they're they're used and how you can use them in your follow-up sequence and now the last thing I want to go over is the Facebook pixel right? because that's what you're going to be using to retarget traffic to make this continue to convert for you so in the back end here you will see under settings on the funnel you will see a head tracking code this is where you paste your install code given to you by Facebook right and this is going to install the pixel on every single step of the funnel now once you do that you just have to dial in the events that are happening on each step of the funnel because these events are going to happen when they hit the page when that page loads so to determine what events again you're just asking yourself what's next so go ahead and google Facebook you can just put FB pixel event specifications There's this link here you'll see specifications for Facebook pixel standard events so this is where you'll see the different type of events and even gives you a short little description to let you know what these events are for so you want to make sure that you're 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 producing these specific events when they hit the funnel and how you how you make that happen is with a short piece of code snippet so I'm going to show you here the pixel code you can see is script open in bracket then you can see the exact Facebook tracking codes here and then we're closing that script and so on the page itself you're going to edit the funnel page and then you're going to go to settings tracking code and then here in the header that's where you would put you would open it up the script All right and the first thing that they're gonna do on this page is they're gonna be viewing content right they saw some sort of content from you. All right then I'm gonna paste that again because I want to use custom conversions what custom conversions are on on the Facebook pixel is where you can isolate specific 
uh, conversion events that happen on your page to target those specific people. So I use the standard event so I can pull everybody that's ever viewed any of my content. And then I use the custom conversion if I want to isolate that specific audience. Right. So here is my core booking page. So I'm going to say booking view, you know, or I could say calendar view. I can do whatever I want there for that. Now the next standard event, did anything else happen on this landing page? Right? No, because just the landing page, all they did was view content. So I'm gonna put that and then slash script to close out the script. And then save. Now if you're using Google Chrome, you can install an extension called the Pixel Helper. And then when you utilize the, the Pixel Helper, it'll let you know what pixel event fired and what events fired on that pixel so if I go here I can see that the pixel has fired and if you give it a minute there you can see it fired page view which is the default event that gets installed on every single page when you install the pixel in the header settings view content that's the ge generic Facebook event for viewing content and then booking view Right, saying they've looked at my calendar. Right, so now that that one is complete, you're just going to go through each step of the funnel and make sure that you set all of those pixel events based on what they're doing. Right, so in the core booking funnel, on here they're going to be looking. Here they're going to be viewing your calendar. When if they hit the survey page, that means they became a lead. They viewed content they viewed your survey you know and they've also scheduled on your calendar right so you would use view content you would use schedule and you'd use lead so how that would look is you know here's the view here's the lead And then let's grab the schedule. All right, so remember we're gonna do standard event and then we're gonna do a custom conversion as well. So I'll say core booking lead. Core booking schedule right so this lets me know that somebody saw my core booking calendar um, it lets me know that somebody became a lead for my core booking calendar it lets me know that somebody scheduled because Facebook actually treats leads and scheduled events differently so whenever you're testing your Facebook ads you're gonna want to test both events and then dump more capital into whichever one converts better for you. And then here they're called pre call survey. Now you might have a specific name for that survey, whatever that specific name is, you can put whatever you want between these quotations and Facebook will pick it up as a custom event. And then for the call confirmation, if they make it to this page, they're already a lead, so you don't need to fire lead again. They already scheduled so you don't need to fire schedule again but they did complete your survey so there is one on here for submit application so you'd want to track submitting application and you'd want to track that they viewed that viewed content and so and then for the results page this is just the results page I'm gonna have you guys build this is when you're starting to build your social proof people always want to see results so the core booking funnel has a results page built in for you to show off your results then the replay this is just a replay of your latest webinar because on the results page if they if they try to exit I have a pop-up for them to opt into the master class so this is going to be if you do an evergreen webinar that's going to be the same video as that evergreen webinar or it's going to be um, a replay of your latest live event and then join the motivated maniacs this is 
Like if I have them on a sales call and I close them, I collect their information, their payment on the phone immediately. Um, so <clears throat> this is the page that I drive them to to make that purchase to actually join the program. So you'll see that in the funnel as well. So for these, you're just viewing content on re results. They're just viewing content on the replay. If they join the Motivated Maniacs, they're joining content here, but this thank you page, they actually made a purchase. So the event there would be, they viewed content, they made a purchase, right? And then value, you would just put in whatever your purchase value is. And then they're already, they already became a lead, so you don't need a fire lead event again. And so that is the pixel event for the core booking funnel. And you're going to do that for both funnels, right? You just want to ask yourself what events are firing on these landing pages. And, you know, what, what do, what events do I need to select? Now, as part of the, the dual funnel system training, I will be supplying you guys my notepads here that define the different triggers and the, and that define the different pixel events so you will have the reference so you're not completely lost when you go in here but I want you to understand the events when they're triggering why they're triggering uh, and then after you have the pixel event dialed in you are ready to do your final review and actually launch it and make it go live so in the next video that's what we're going to be doing you can go ahead and click next below if you want to jump into that today or you can wait for the email to come in because you know I'm going to hit you with that email follow-up to make sure you're consuming all of this training. Thanks again for tuning in. This is Big Marv. One love.